Hi guys, I'm Mike. I'm Bob. This is Bob Close. Look behind us is a vacuum kill. Bob is going to show you or talk about it and what it does. I'm just going to maybe back off and ask you some questions. Sure. That's fine. Yep. So how does this thing work? It's like drying wood in outer space. That's the best way I can describe it. I had a thought that when you dry it under a vacuum, you were drying under pressure, but it's a lack of pressure. Negative. Negative pressure. So between the heat in the plates and the vacuum is what dries the wood. There's no moving air. There's nothing to stress the wood. So what this allows us to do is we can take green lumber right off the saw and dry it in a matter of days or weeks versus six or eight months conventionally with a air drying or steam or steam kilns, whatever, it's all. This goes much more fast. Um, steam is generally what, 30 to 45 days? Yep, and then you have air drying periods before that, which can be a couple months. Sure. Right. So, I took soft maple last week and it was sawed the day before we put it in. It was dried 6% four days later. What's the capacity of this kiln? About 2,800 feet is what we're comfortable with. I can fit up to 26 feet long and up to 50 inches wide per layer. So depending upon how many layers we put in, that's going to tell us how much lumber we can fit. Okay. Thickness makes a difference and species makes a difference. Okay. Uh, we can dry a lot of things together, like cherry and birch and maple. Uh, white oak is a separate schedule, walnut's a separate schedule. Okay, so and thickness. And thickness. Yep. What's that? Sure, I can do that. There you go. Quite in center. There we go. Oh, you are all day. I am. Um, I'm short day. Yeah. So, primarily your function though here at Close, what's the name of your business? This is KS Hardwood is what it's called. Okay. That's, I am the manager basically here. I run the scheduling, I run the drying. Uh, there are two investors that are, one owns the property, one owns the property. Okay. So, there's nothing hidden. We are what we are. Yeah. Uh, guys that didn't know each other years ago. And it's all come together and works out incredibly well. That is awesome how that works. Uh, we dry for mills. That's our, our biggest business. And I dry my lumber here, which is all thick and good. That's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot some footage of that yeah. when I throw it in the sure. so, Perfect. You are the man. So, what are, you, what are you guys trying to do as far as trying to bring in other business? Other mills? I would take it. I'd like. I'd love to always talk to somebody. Uh, I don't have a problem. Retail, you know, for somebody that wants to dry a piece or two, if I can fit it in, it's really hard because usually my loads are full when I go in. And you don't only have to just keep track. Of one keep track of one piece of wood is enough. Uh, so I'm always looking. If you're a, a mill and you want to do a run of eight quarter red oak, you need it in a couple of weeks. We can do it, but I have to fit it in my schedule. And I'm right now I'm booked out a month or two ahead, so I need that you know some time. If you want, are interested, let me know. Fair enough. Okay. One of the advantages we have in drying is we can take lumber that's been fresh sawn. We don't have to air dry it. Matter of fact. It works out better if you don't air dry it or end seal it. And if we can schedule it and get it in the kiln, you're going to get a better product even than is possible normally because you won't have any of the degrade that you get in air drying. The end checking, the warping, the twisting. There's a bladder inside the kiln that when we run the vacuum, that bladder will expand and push the pile tighter so that everything comes out nice and flat. So what's in between all the wood? Are these plates that are over here? They're 26 feet long, they're 50 inches wide. You have a plate on the very bottom, a layer of lumber, a plate, a layer of lumber. That's how we load the kiln. We attach hoses on the end once the part is in the kiln, and that will pump the hot water through. So these plates are just circulating warm 
the circulating warm water that we control off our computer. Because my my old assumption was that they actually had tiny, tiny holes no. were drawing fluid out. No. Okay. As it dries in the chamber, there's nothing moving in the chamber. As that water comes out of that wood, it just flows off and flows out the drains. Okay. There's no pressure. Right. So that allows the water to come out. Okay. Okay. So that's merely to maintain a temperature. Yep. And we ramp the temperature up, we start, and then ramp it up depending upon what we're drying. Okay. That's what we do. Okay. Okay. All right. And it's all, you said it's something about you can control it with, uh, you can monitor it from your phone. it off the computer. Okay. Um, this shows us ramp temperature for the heat, the dumps of water, sure. um, everything that runs the kiln. That's our that's our screen that we use when we're setting everything. Sure. This will give us we can ramp up the temperature, we can ramp up the vacuum, we can control the vacuum, we can control if we add steam for white oak, we can do that all off the computer. Okay. And the most important part is a place to rest. Yep. A place to weary. Sit. Yep. We bring the wood in here, uh, we have enough space, we can bring it into the forklift, set it down, we unload, and then load the same day. So it's a, it's a fast turnaround. Yeah, and so your cycle time for any given species are like a week? A week to two weeks. Thick white oak, thick, and I mean thick, three, four inches thick, can take up to three to four weeks. Okay. But it should come out flawless. Now I have another technical question. Okay. Can you intermix thicknesses and not worry about Yes. Work? You can. I can, but I have to dry it according to the thickest piece. Okay. So my schedule is always according to the thickest piece. If I have three inch thick curly maple and then a bunch of six quarter curly maple, I have to dry it to the 12 quarter curly maple schedule. Okay. Okay. Well, it's actually a 12 quarter maple. Yeah. It doesn't have to be curly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yep, the green light means everything's working. Uh, if there's an issue, the yellow light comes on. If there's a real bad issue, the red light comes on. Okay. We don't, we don't want the red light. Right. Okay. And yeah. usually it's funny because I live 25 miles from here, but I can control this from my house. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. Monitor the power line. If there's a power outage, everything shuts down. When the power comes back on, the kiln starts back up to where it left off. You don't lose it and you don't damage it. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Is there anything else you want to add to it? Uh, you can go back to it. Alright, this might start up, I don't know. This is the vacuum pump that sucks the air out of the kiln. You got about a five horse there? Seven? Uh, that is a seven. That is five horses, I take that, yeah. yeah. I have eight horses all together that I have to provide home with, sure. That's the hot water pump. Um, our temperature in, temperature out, the pressure, all that's controlled. This is the waste tank. Sure. The water that comes off the wood goes into the tank and gets pumped outside. Okay. And this is, oh! Oh, you've got a tube heater, heat exchanger. Yep, there's heat exchangers there, there. This is for adding ammonia fumes. If I want to fume walnut or white oak to get a better, to get a better color. Really? That's what that does. I stick that in a bottle of industrial ammonia with a little valve that I turn and it'll suck it right in the chamber. I just have to figure out how much and how long it has to suck. Uh, we really? haven't figured that out. Well, you got to make your things work yeah. first before you can experiment, right? right. Exactly. It's just like anything exactly. else. Exactly. And I see you got a bunch of filters here. Yep. Those are filters. We clean those every time we run a load. Uh, those are actually off the vacuum lines. I don't understand all that part. Good. Yeah, that's okay. You don't have to. I don't have to. Here's the wood. I know I have to clean. You're the wood man. I'm the wood guy. There you go. Yep. Well, I appreciate the tour, Bob. You bet, Mike. Yeah. I'm going to put a little bit of footage on of his inventory that he sells here. All figured, figured wood. 
And that's Monkey Pod, that's you said? Monkey Pod from Costa Rica. Okay. That so is some cool wood. It is cool wood. You know, the book match pair, I think, is the prettiest, but what do I know? Right, right. I know. You know a lot, Bob. You're intelligent, highly intelligent. So, the other question I got for you, is this stuff inventory what you've dri dried, but also some of your own figured wood? This is all mine. This it's is all your all own all figured mine. wood. This okay. All this, the green stuff we're drying is down there. Um, even most of that is mine. The ash, the two bundles of ash are just brought back yesterday. Those are going in on Tuesday. Let's see, I was just That's from the mill. They seem yep. wet. So. Yep. Yeah, okay. those are, those are uh, just going in. They'll go in Tuesday. So. Okay, so let's see what some of this, this is. This is bird's eye here. That's eight foot bird's eye. There's eight foot live edge curly, hard curly maple. There's uh, 10 foot and 12 foot bird's eye. And this is what it just came out recently. This is all, yeah, this is actually what I took out here about 10 days ago. Okay. Um, okay. And I want to go ahead. No, it, it's just, oh, there's bark pocket. Um, oh, that's some pretty stuff. Every, it's one of those things you either like it or you don't. Or you don't, yeah. But you can see what it does is. Did anybody ever give you an explanation how that works yet? Does anybody know? Well, I've got a piece over there a guy told me. It was done by wasps, believe it or not. They crawl under the bark and leave, lay eggs. Really? And that'll create some of this. The bark pocket, I have no idea. You know, curly okay. is, and bird's eyes, bird's eyes from stress. Curly, nobody seems to know. Genetics is yeah. a big thing. Okay. I had a, a fella over in Europe that grows curly birch. Really? He germinates all his own trees, and he'll grow figured birch. Are you serious? Yep, and it's all genetics. Okay. And I know in the woods, loggers, if they come across a curly log yep. or a tree, we know usually it. you'll find more in that area because it's genetic. Kind of like finding morels or, I mean. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. That's in the that. best way to put it. Sure, okay. So what else do you keep on hand? Oh. Lots. It's all figured. It's all from Wisconsin. That's all wood that came out of the pond. That's the reclaimed stuff from okay. the pond. Okay. Um, those laid underwater for a hundred years. And that's kind of like what they do in Lake Superior and those other yep. places. Yep. This was a sawmill up by Dunbar that okay. went out of business in 1900 or shortly after. Sure. Hardwood doesn't float, so they laid at the bottom of the pond and. Wow, you got a lot. I, there's about 4,500 feet. What and what species mostly? Hard and soft maple, yellow birch, and white birch. Okay. And the white birch were the biggest white birch I had ever seen in my life. Well, things and are bigger. And the bark back. was still on the white birch. Really? And perfectly white. It's it's funny because the the maple you can tell the birch is always smooth and the maple's always checked. Oh, okay. That's that's one way to tell it, um, and I don't know why that is, but that's just that's, what it is. Yeah, I'm just going to look at like from underneath. So this is a maple. Yep. And I have bird's eye maple. That, I have four bird's eye logs that came out of there. Really? Yes, and it is incredible bird's wow. eye. Wow. Cool. I'm I'm never short of learning anything when I come here, Bob. <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually. Yep. Oh, this, walk. hey, this is the stuff that was done by wasps. Okay. That's red oak. Oh, sure enough, I can barely tell on the edge here. Yep. Yep. Because that's caused by the wasps laying eggs under the bark. I don't, there's a name for them, and I don't want to offend anyone on your channel, but yeah. they're leaf effers. Oh, okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's what they're called. So. That's fine. Oh, but they're I, a little tiny, tiny wasp. I can see. Look at the edge. You can see the, the oh, curl. Yeah, you can see the curl. Yep. Nice. So if you ever need anything, yep. talk to Bob. Yep. If you want fingered stuff, that's what I do. And you'll ship anywhere. I'm I'll almost. Ship anywhere. I ship. I've shipped pretty much any place. Good. Okay. All this right. It depends how much shipping they want to pay. Yeah. Well, you know, that's just that. That's just it. So, all right. Well, I'll let you take care of your customer and uh, thanks, thanks for the buddy. tour. I appreciate it. All right. Talk to you later. Yep. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. And um, 
that's my first little interview type thing that I'm doing for Bob and whatnot. So I would appreciate you checking him out. He's a really, really unique person, kind of like me. Um, but he's his work, woodwork is incredible, and the work he ha the wood he has is just phenomenal. The figured hardwoods, anything he can get his hands on and dry, he probably anything you want, he probably has or something close to it. So I'm gonna plug him right here at the end. Thanks for watching. But this is his website, BobClothes.com. Um, and I'd like to thank Bob for letting me interview him at the same time. And I hope that you guys enjoy the vacuum kiln process. It is a little bit noisy. I hope the video, you can hear everything. Um, it, it, it is what it is. And one day we're going to go back and probably do a um, unloading of the kiln. Um, the time just didn't work out for us this time. So that'll be another video. And you can see some of the inner workings of the kiln. And we'll go from there. So uh, there again, I appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe. Go check out Bob. He's on Facebook, Instagram. Oh, let me see if I can pull his uh, Instagram up. Oh, no luck. Anyways, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one. See you. Bye.